Hi everyone, Nolito here. Before we start this video, I'd like to explain the concept behind it, I am going to play the game and follow ChatGPT's instructions as well as I can. The priorities, build designs and research orders will mostly be decided by ChatGPT. The voice you'll hear during these videos will be text generated using the AI, for the most part. I'll maybe change a things or two, if there are important details I'd like to talk about, but most of what will be said will be AI generated. Enjoy! Hello everyone, and welcome to this Factorio Let's Play series. My name is Engineer AI, and I'm the brain behind this project. And I'm here with my partner in crime, Human Engineer, who will be doing the work. In this Let's Play, we've decided to use a low enemy count setting, with low evolution factor. The ore patches are small but rich, so it will be required to set up a train network to expand our base. We've also installed some quality of life mods to help us out, even distribution, long reach, squeak through, and bottleneck. So, as we work through this series, you'll get to see how we build our base, expand our production, and launch that rocket. And who knows, maybe we'll even have some fun along the way. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. After starting the game, our first priority was to set up a power grid to get our production going. We started by manually mining some iron and collecting wood and stone to create the necessary resources. We then used this iron to build our first furnaces, which were used to smelt more iron plates to make the rest of the necessary items. Once we had enough resources, we set up a simple power plant consisting of 5 boilers and 10 steam engines, based on the design I suggested earlier. This power plant provides us with enough electricity to keep our factory running and to start building more advanced production facilities. The design we used for the power plant is simple but effective. We place the boilers in a row, with the steam engines arranged in a parallel line next to them. We then use pipes to connect the boilers to the steam engines, and set up power poles to connect the entire grid. This design is scalable, so we can easily add more boilers and steam engines as our factory grows and our power demands increase. After setting up our first power plant, the next step was to get coal to the boilers to produce steam. Coal is a very important resource in the early game as it provides a high energy value of 4 megajoules, making it an ideal fuel for our power plant. Each boiler consumes about 0.45 coal per second, and our power grid consists of 5 boilers and 10 steam engines. That means we need 5 drills producing coal to supply the power plant. With this setup, we can produce up to 9 megawatts of power which is more than enough to run our initial setup of 20 furnaces for smelting iron and copper. However, we will need to expand our power grid as we continue to build and add more machines to our base. As you can see, Human Engineer is now moving the power plant upside down. This will make it much easier to get coal in the boilers, as they will be located closer to the coal mines. It's a small but clever move that will save a lot of time and effort in the long run. The labs will be used to conduct research, which will unlock new technologies and improve our capabilities in the game. We have 5 labs because that's a good starting number to balance research speed with resource consumption. Our first researches will be automation, logistics, and gun turrets. Automation is important because it will allow us to automate many of the repetitive tasks involved in base building, which will save us a lot of time and effort in the long run. Logistics will enable us to transport items efficiently throughout our base, which will also help us to save time and resources. Gun turrets are essential for defending our base against enemy attacks, which will become more frequent and intense as the game progresses. Overall, these researches will provide us with a solid foundation to build upon as we continue to expand and improve our base. For the smelting setups, I suggested using a spiral design for the 20 furnaces of iron and copper. The advantage of this design is that it can fit into a smaller area compared to a linear design, which is useful when space is limited. The disadvantage is that it can be a bit more complicated to set up, and it may take some time to get used to the layout. Overall, the spiral design can be a great choice for players who want to maximize their use of space while still being able to produce a high amount of smelted resources. Two thousand years later.
After we have set up the power grid and smelting facilities, the next step is to automate the production of belts and inserters. We will need a lot of these to build our base, and manually crafting them is not efficient. We will also need to start mining and smelting copper, in addition to iron, to produce the materials we need. To do this, we will set up two separate spiral designs for the iron and copper smelting facilities, as we discussed earlier. Once these are in place, we will begin to automate the production of belts and inserters using the assembly machines we have researched. Automating these processes will greatly increase our productivity and allow us to focus on expanding our base and researching new technologies. In this video, we started our journey in Factorio and set up our early game base. We began with manual mining and progressed to automated smelting and research. With the help of Engineer AI's guidance, we built a power plant and automated the production of belts and inserters. In the next few steps, we'll focus on expanding our base and optimizing our production. We'll need to set up a train network to transport resources from distant ore patches, build a dedicated mall area to produce more advanced items, and start planning our defense against the enemies lurking in the world. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next video in the series where we'll continue our journey in Factorio with the help of Engineer AI's expertise.